Good morning. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Whitney White with Johnson Controls. I am Director of Marketing for North America. And we have such a great presentation for prepared for you guys today. Excited to kick it off. But first, before we get started, a couple housekeeping items. If you can go to your go, con go to webinar control panel, locate the chat section or the question section and chat us in. Let us know where you're coming from, uh, where you're calling in from, what's the weather like, things like that. We wanna make sure you can hear us, see the presentation. This will also be where you can ask questions live and get answers. Okay, great. We've got lots of people calling in. Um, let's see, we've got Mark from Utah. David from Canada, Nick, Santa Cruz, Sunny. Oh, I'm jealous. Mike, it's cold where you are. I'm in Utah. It's pretty cold. It snowed over the weekend, and I'm pretty sure people are starting to hit the slopes. So I am not that person, but to each their own. <laughs> so, um, okay, great. Bob, Alfredo, Joe, Jerry, Mary, Sylvian, Austin, Gary. We have a lot of people on. So excited. Okay, great. All right, well, to kick it off, we have um, a couple of, well, here, let me introduce the panel first. We've got a lot of people on. We've got, again, I'm Whitney White with Johnson Controls. We have Bo Freeman here. He's gonna be in the background looking at questions, answering them. He's gonna be doing some of those items for us. And then we have Jim with Alarm.com and he does device engineering. We're excited to hear about Alarm integration with Wi-Fi 6. Kevin Woodworth is the director of uh, Global Technical Accounts. He's probably a familiar face to a lot of you guys. And then of course, we have the infamous Nate Anderson, director of Technical Account Management. And he will be hosting a lot of the webinar today because he is for sure the expert on Wi-Fi 6. So he's, this, this is the group to ask your questions to, that is for sure. So um, Bo, we have a couple of polls to start, right? What, can you go ahead and get, kick those off for us? Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you guys all so much for being here once again. Uh, we'll just jump right into these polls. So first product here, um, are you currently buying JCI products? So yes or not yet? Wow, you guys are voting quick today. I love it, I love it. Give you guys another couple seconds here to, to finish voting. Alrighty, everybody speak now or forever hold your peace. I think we got everybody that's uh, gonna vote here. So thank you all so much for participating in that. Um, I've got a couple, we're gonna do a couple polls here. So bear with me, sorry guys. We, we really love doing those polls. It helps us understand where you guys are at and how we can better um, kind of serve you guys. So um, next question we have here is, are you currently buying IQ Wi-Fi 6? Yes or not yet? Oh, wow, you guys are voting quick today. Thank you, thank you for being on top of it. Give you guys another 20 seconds here. All righty, speak now and forever hold your peace. <laughs> awesome, great, thank you guys so much. Uh, looks like we've got a lot of people that aren't quite installing IQ Wi-Fi 6 yet, so you came to the right webinar to learn more about it. Um, one more question, kind of similar. Um, are, are you using IQ Wi-Fi 6 in your home currently? And our options are yes or not yet. All righty, give you guys a couple seconds, couple more seconds here. Perfect, awesome, thank you everybody so much. Um, and that, is all I have for polls right now. So, oh, I can't see go to webinar. Sorry, am I still there? Yeah, sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so Whitney, do you want me to pass it back to you? Or are we gonna pass it to Nate? Okay, Nate, or Whitney's gonna take over. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the broadcast with uh, the Wi-Fi 6 presentation. Nate was messaging me, are you able to control the PowerPoint or should I take it over for you? I think I can control it. Can you hear me okay? We can't hear you. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. You can hear me okay. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank, thank you, uh, Bo and Whitney. Th thanks, guys, for uh, putting those polls together and for the, the brief introduction. So, 
um, as we get started here, I figured I'd just uh, spend a little bit of time uh, reviewing some of our past content. So our team has been uh, super busy creating all these um, videos. Uh, we actually did a webinar uh, series a, a little while ago, we called it season five, where we hosted um, a little bit of everything on IQ Wi-Fi 6. So um, for those of you who uh, hadn't had a chance or opportunity to uh, be part of those uh, webinars, you know, uh, sc uh, scan this QR code and you'll be linked right to those videos. So um, we'll likely be posting uh, some of this content later on, on uh, that same channel. So, um, <clears throat> so again, welcome. Welcome to today's presentation. Um, so the purpose of today's presentation is to uh, really just review, uh, you know, this new line of IQ Wi-Fi 6 products. So this is uh, our second generation of IQ Wi-Fi products. And here at Johnson Controls, we're um, definitely uh, excited to bring uh, more products, you know, within the networking sphere <laughs> in the future. So uh, really here, we're, we're super heavily vested in um, networking and Wi-Fi products as a company to support you and the success of uh, this line of products. So. Um, really, I'm hoping after today's webinar, you'll be a little bit more familiar with this line of products, uh, mesh networking, um, understand why Wi-Fi, and really what makes Wi-Fi 6 the better option for, for our customers. Hey, Nate, real quick. Uh, we just got people in the chat asking if we could pop that QR code up really quick. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. We have, while you guys are snapping that, I just wanted to do a shout out to the dealer portal. We do have assets available for Wi-Fi 6 there as well. So if you're looking for more marketing materials, social posts, email campaigns, all of that stuff, imagery, it's all on the dealer portal. So you can go there as well, as well as the product page for IQ Wi-Fi 6. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll find a lot of assets there as well that might be helpful. Yeah, cool, Thank, thanks for that, Whit. So what is Wi-Fi 6? Um, I figured I'd uh, spend just a few moments here explaining uh, what Wi-Fi 6 is all about. So Wi-Fi 6 is our latest generation generation of IQ Wi-Fi mesh products here at JCI. It's the only Wi-Fi solution purpose-built for pros. It comes in checking all the boxes with better speeds, the ability to add coverage, connectivity uh, to the back end with alarm.com. So uh, now everything in, in the home or business, as you might be aware, is wanting to become connected to the cloud. Um, and that's not limited to uh, our products, right? So including all of your alarm.com cameras, maybe those doorbells and, and even those IQ remotes and, and IQ panels. So I thought I'd start with a little commercial. Aid. It's kind of fun. What is that? The new IQ Wi-Fi 6. The first Wi-Fi purpose-built for pros. I'm a pro. Is it easy to install? Very easy. Like, plug it in and everything just works easy. But does it mesh? Oh, it's Wi-Fi 6. So it's the latest mesh, which means it's fast everywhere. You got dead spots? I hate dead spots. Each IQ Wi-Fi 6 covers up to 1,500 square feet. And you can have eight. So that's like 12,000 square feet. <laughs> That'll work. Please tell me it works with doorbells. Yes, video doorbells, indoor outdoor cameras, garage doors, IQ panels, IQ remotes, anything on Wi-Fi. Wow, you guys thought of everything. I don't want to go back. Always have to go back. IQ Wi-Fi is connected with alarm.com, so you can control everything from mobile tech. So when you have a problem, you can fix it from, well, anywhere. Really? Is there an app for me? Maybe one with parental control? Of course, the alarm.com app. It's very easy to use. So I'm kind of new and I don't really understand Wi-Fi. You don't have to. We make everything simple and we've got training. What if the customer changes a fucking password and makes everything stop working? Not a problem. All your security devices are on a separate partition that you manage remotely. So if they change their password, it won't affect you. I'm in. Where do I buy? 
right here. IQ Wi-Fi 6, the first Wi-Fi purpose built for pros. Yeah, I think to say that we uh, had a good time shooting that commercial is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> I still think you like it because you're one of the stars, mate. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I think Jeremy stole the show on that one for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I always get a kick watching that. Uh, well, we talked earlier about why we got into networking and the Wi-Fi space, and really the message was clear. You asked us to. So while coming up with the first uh, Wi-Fi purpose-built solution for pros, we knew that the number one cost of doing business was the callbacks. So with a remote way to support from anywhere in the world with our partners at alarm.com, you can now do things like uh, a remote uh, reboot, you know, so you can reboot your network, see connectivity, IP address information, and even trigger WPS command through uh, mobile tech. So this is indeed um, what we would call a purpose-built router with features like creating Wi-Fi partitions for security devices. Now you don't have to worry about your customers changing an encryption code or SSID because the backend, um, uh, because the user can't control that with this security partition. So this is actually a separate um, security SSID that you as the, uh, the installer has complete control over. Um, so now you can control all of those security devices and, and, and validate that they stay connected. So, um, you know, Wi-Fi 6, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it checks all the boxes, right? So it's uh, pretty much everything that you'd expect from, from a Wi-Fi 6 router. Um, so it supports things like gigabit speeds, um, it allows you to add additional coverage. Um, so um, the one thing here that I would uh, speak uh, to is, is agent placement. So with these units, it's uh, one SKU. Um, so all the agents, the controller is what we're calling them. Um, they're all the same device. And, and uh, you know, if you have a, a situation where you need more coverage, um, we're, we're suggesting uh, one of uh, these routers for every 1500 square feet. So some things to consider when designing good Wi-Fi, begin with the controller. Uh, that's uh, again, what we call the router that hosts all the SSID and the encryption uh, code to all the agents in the middle of the home. So start by placing these from the inside out. And if you think about those alarm.com cameras, most of them are on the perimeter of the home. So you need to make sure that you have good coverage to every corner of the home by overlapping signals from the center out. So Wi-Fi 6 was uh, definitely designed as the ultimate Wi-Fi solution. So some of the additional features, including Wi-Fi partitions, um, you know, I've mentioned this um, earlier, but let me talk uh, just a, a bit more briefly about this uh, feature and benefit and why it's a feature that really makes IQ Wi-Fi 6 designed for pros. So gone are the days when you get that call from the customer. Um, you know, we've all had it before where uh, we, we put the, the solutions in our customers' hands and heaven forbid, they change the, the Wi-Fi credentials, um, sometimes causing a truck roll, right? So that's really the, the biggest cost of, of doing business. Um, with Wi-Fi partitions, IQ panels connect to the main network first, and then they move automatically to the security network. So the IQ panel is connected and stays connected to that security network or SSID. The security network is only uh, controllable via the back end with alarm.com for best in class user experience. So you now as the technician have complete control over um, your security devices. So in the past, alarm.com has mentioned that they have um, what they call a smart gateway. And Jim, did you wanna um, spend just maybe a few minutes talking about the differences between smart gateway and you know, IQ Wi-Fi 6? Absolutely, yeah, so for for many of you, uh, the Alarm.com Smart Gateway has been a product available, uh, and it's it has provided uh, some of these capabilities uh, in the past for you. So the, the Smart Gateway is a single access point that you would connect to the customer's home router, and it, it would essentially provide that se security partition uh, for all your smart home and you know security devices that leverage Wi-Fi. It provided the ability to essentially 
move those devices off of the customer Wi-Fi and save you truck rolls from you know a customer changing their you know changing out their router changing out their ISP, changing the credentials of their Wi-Fi network, whether it's you know the SSID, the password, or both. And so that, that's been you know, a big hit and it's been successful over the years. However, that device does have its limitations. It's, it's only a single access point and it connects via ethernet to the customer's home router. So you can only place one of them uh, at the same location that the customer already has a router. Uh, so that that kind of limits your coverage, right? Like that that's the big push here with this product is that it's a mesh. It expands up to eight total nodes, you know, 1,500 square feet per node. Uh, so if you think of the smart gateway, it essentially was one node, and you could you couldn't really expand your coverage. So this product really does kind of expand the capabilities uh, for all those different you know video devices and other devices in the home. Uh, secondly, that, that device is only a 2.4 gigahertz only device. So there's just limitations when it comes to the speed, the technology, uh, especially on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, spectrum, there's a lot of congestion. So really by moving to IQ Wi-Fi 6, now you can leverage both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and you can move as many of those devices as possible over to the 5 gigahertz to kind of free up that airspace, to free up the spectrum for all your other devices. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there as well. So really like IQ Wi-Fi 6 is a monumental upgrade uh, in capabilities over what we previously provided to dealers uh, with the Smart Gateway. And you know we really are excited uh, to move forward with this integration with JCI and you know, deliver uh, overwhelming value to, to dealers uh, in this customer facing Wi-Fi space. Yeah, thank, thanks for uh, for that, Jim. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't agree more um, with with Wi-Fi mesh networks um, being able to to expand and and get to every nook and cranny uh, for for best in class coverage is is becoming more and more important to our customers. Um, one of the things that we uh, Nate, I have a question. Well, that's not true. I ha we have lots of questions coming in the chat. Do you want me to vocalize them now or do you want to wait until we get to a certain point? No, yeah, no. If, if you've got a, a couple looming questions and, and you want to mention yeah. them. As, as we we're have talking. some good questions. Great. So can IQ Wi-Fi 6 only be used with IQ panels or can it be used with other uh, panels? That, that's a great question. Um, the, the, the simple answer is it, it, it can be used either or, right? Okay. So you don't need IQ panel in order to, to get all the benefits um, uh, as, as far as coverage goes. Now, if you want the benefit of the panel UI, um, you certainly would need, um, you know, IQ panel. So we'll uh, in, in actually the next slide, we'll, we'll review what the panel UI looks like, what that in integration all includes. Um, there is, uh, you know, some some pages there that that enable automatically um, specific for end users and, and some pages there that give you the dealer and the installer a little more um, control over, you know, things like SSID or encryption code. So perfect. Um, Jerry asked, what's the max number of cameras you can put on the router? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, Jim, do you want to, <laughs> there, there, there's uh, uh, pretty much a, uh, a way to, to kind of figure that out. And it's really limited by um, your ISP, I think, at this point. So um, with our router, it does support up to 200 and what is it, 255 or 256 addresses. And out of the box, um, we do have a, a, a limited uh, DHCP range. That's the number of addresses that it will hand out automatically. Um, I think 150 devices, if memory serves me right. But um, Jim, do you want to maybe speak to the limitations there with cameras? Sure. I, I think this question might actually stem from uh, what's been previously advertised with the Smart Gateway. In, in, in the past, the Smart Gateway, we've always provided the guidance that it only supports up to uh, four video devices, and that's because uh, it's 
It's a little bit older of a product. It only uses 2.4 gigahertz. So the, the throughput limitations of the technology, like it just gives you suboptimal behavior when you, when you have more than, you know, four cameras streaming at the same time. But, you know, moving up to Wi-Fi 6, uh, to this mesh product, um, it, it really changes the game. So uh, there, there's no like hard cap on the number of video devices. Uh, just like any, any router that you have, uh, there's going to be technical limitations of the technology, uh, depending on if you live in a very congested area, there's a lot of routers, you know, everyone's competing for, for airtime on those routers. So it, it's, it's more likely going to be a restriction based on your environment and not the technology itself. Wi-Fi 6, uh, there's a, a lot of, you know, good technological improvements over Wi-Fi 5, over Wi-Fi 4, that really allows the, the router to handle more devices and higher, higher throughput. So, you know, you should have monumental increases in throughput and the number of devices supported than you're, you're, you're typically used to uh, with some older products. Yeah, that's perfect. perfect. Um, Dennis asked, is the IEQ Wi-Fi 6 backward compatible? Will it work with like printers that are currently on the network and stuff like that? Um, yeah, so there's there's two thoughts that I have, uh, you know, when we talk about backwards compatibility. Um, I think it's a great question, by the way. Um, so backwards compatibility to me could mean, uh, hey, does this work? This is our Gen 2 product. Does this work with Gen 1? Um, so the answer to that question is uh, no. Uh, they they use different technologies to mesh uh, both wirelessly and they do support, they, they, they both do support what we would call a, a hardwired um, uh, back plane, right, through the LAN connection. Um, but yeah, you would not want to um, install Wi-Fi 6 with uh, current, you know, Gen 1 customer. So, you know, if, if they're upgrading, you just simply want to uh, replace, um, you know, Gen 1 with Gen 2. The other half to that question is compatibility. Um, there are some devices out there that um, only support 2.5 gigahertz. Um, and uh, this product does support uh, what we call band steering. So out of the box, it's going to have one uh, network name or one SSID that will broadcast on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, the workaround uh, for, for 2.4 devices is to move them over to the security network. So on the security network, the security partition that we're talking about, um, it does have the capability of um, separating those bands out. So, so you may have an alarm.com camera as an example that um, works better on 2.4 versus 5. Great question. Perfect. We have a lot more questions. We do have Bo and uh, I think Mark Bateman in the background answering them. So let's keep on with the presentation and we'll keep going through the questions. I just don't want to slow us down and we want to get to everything, right? So let's keep going and then I'll come back in. Perfect. Sounds good. So yeah, uh, moving on here, we, we, we knew that when we came to market with a product, we had to make it super simple to install um, with, uh, you know, basically uh, put it in the hands of, of a technician that has maybe little to no network experience. Um, I think that we've been able to accomplish that with Wi-Fi 6. Um, it's essentially a plug and play uh, solution uh, right out of the box. It's got uh, automatic updates enabled. Um, so when you first power that controller up and you've got it connected to the WAN, um, you're gonna um, get an update if, if one's needed. Um, the idea here was to come to market with a minimalistic look and feel. Um, you know, it's got things like built-in reset, uh, WPS functionality um, for uh, quick, easy uh, connectivity. And then it's got the capability to, you know, I mentioned this earlier, to support what we call the wired backhaul. Um, and that's a good uh, feature, you know, for those detached locations like your mother-in-law apartment. Maybe there's a pool house that's detached. Um, where you where you have a, a wire essentially ran. Um, so every uh, one other thing here to, to to mention as we're talking about um, you know uh, ease of installation is every IQ Wi-Fi 6 actually ships with uh, this wall now. So 
it's an accessory that's uh, designed for ease of install. Um, really a, a, a super simple design. Um, I got to hand it to Kevin. Um, he was the one that um, you know uh, really drove uh, uh, this accessory uh, to be shipped with every product. Um, it does kind of set us apart from the competitors. Uh, you know, some of our competitors offer something similar, but you have to buy that as an accessory separate. Um, but yeah, it's it's super uh, nice to be able to get those wires neat and tidy and up out of the way. Um, so this mount was built to cover a single game back box, um, or I've even seen them attached right to a drywall. Um, so so really really kind of a neat uh, accessory there. Okay, so uh, um, I mentioned this before, um, you know, there was a question about uh, being able to use IQ Wi-Fi 6 uh, as a standalone or um, a solution without, uh, you know, connectivity to a, an IQ panel. Certainly it can be done. Um, you know, the benefit there is you can still have the alarm.com piece where, where the, excuse me, the router is connected uh, to the customer's account if, if they have a, a, a an alarm.com account, maybe they they don't have IQ panel, um, but really to get all the benefits of IQ uh, Wi-Fi, um, you you could pair it to a panel, and once the panel is connected, this um, this dashboard is what we're calling it. It's a, a customer facing dashboard is enabled by default. It gives the customer, you know, really a 10,000 foot view uh, of what's going on, you know, with their network. So. Um, it just kind of follows the same theme that we've had, uh, you know, built into the panel. Uh, we color code everything. Um, it's either green, uh, red, or, or yellow, um, you know, so we can, uh, uh, you know, just, just by looking for the colors, if, if, there's, uh, if, if, if everything is green, we know most everything is, is connected and, and, and uh, communicating as you'd expect. So. Um, we do support what we call profiles on, on the panel here. So the customer can go in and create, maybe they have a, a, a smart home uh, profile, or maybe they want to create a profile for their kids where they can pause and, and start internet connectivity to the devices that are defined to that profile. So this is, this is not a new feature uh, for mesh uh, routers, but it's something definitely that we knew we needed to, to offer. Um, and, and you do have, you know, the ability to manage those right from the panel. Um, a few other things here, uh, connectivity is, is important, right, to, uh, to any network. I mentioned uh, they, they do support WPS, but, um, you know, for your guests that, that are maybe visiting, um, them being able to get access to your um, internet uh, is important to them. Um, and if it is important to them, you can, um, have this QR code enabled, it is enabled by default. And uh, yeah, once they, they scan that, they can just jump right on onto the, the guest network there without any, uh, you know, passing of um, <laughs> encryption codes um, that often are, are hard to understand or, or easily fat fingered. And then of course you've got that speed test uh, functionality. So, um, uh, you know, I mentioned this, it's it's enabled by default. Um, you can go in and, and turn it off. There are some additional um, UIs available on the panel, um, both through uh, in what we'd call an installer uh, code or a dealer code. Um, so if if you do install IQ Wi-Fi 6 with IQ panel and you wanted uh, to, to disable this for some reason, you could. Um, there's some other... Um, settings you know right there on the panel you can go in and change an ssid an encryption code you can uh, get similar information you can see uh, what's on or offline um, you know all the connected devices that sort of thing so lots of cool features uh, built right into to this panel ui hey nate i have a question and this might be kind of a silly question but i don't know a lot about wi-fi six <laughs> so why as a consumer why would i want wi-fi six over any of the other routers that are out there? That, 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 no, that's an awesome um, uh, question. So, so Wi-Fi 6 uh, supports what we call um, a, uh, AX1800. So it's going to give you features like OFDMA um, without getting too far down that rabbit hole. Um, you know, your, your speed, your connectivity between devices is just going to feel um, what you'd expect from 
you know anything that's being released with, with today's technology. Um, so that that would be probably the main reason. Uh, coverage um, with Wi-Fi six is going to be a little bit uh, more enhanced, you know, over okay. uh, previous generations as well. So, being a parent, the parental controls. What am I able to like restrict websites? What kind of restrictions does it offer? Um, yeah, great, great question. Um, so today, uh, it's just simply a pause and a play. Um, so if you want to get your kids um, attention, right, oftentimes you're competing uh, for their attention with their devices, so you could um, turn off their internet. <laughs> if I want to cause chaos real fast, <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> Maybe you're trying to get them up to eat dinner, you know, would be a okay. area and you just turn them off and um, get their attention that way. Um, we are talking about enhancing some of this, uh, some of these, these these offerings, you know, I think you'll see in the future a way to maybe schedule that, um, you know, and, and, and restrict it a little bit differently. But okay. yeah, great question. Mike, Mike had a question that I thought was kind of relevant. He wants to know, what's the pitch to sell an IQ Wi-Fi 6 to a customer who already has a Qualsys system? Is there something that we suggest doing in that regard to help kind of close that deal? Uh, that that's that's a great question. I don't know, um, um, Kev. Do you want to <laughs> chime in on that? The, uh, the the first thing that would come to mind is just you know better Wi-Fi coverage. So um, I think most people could agree that they could uh, live without a lot of things, but they they can't live without good Wi-Fi coverage. So that, that's kind of where my mind goes. Is there um, any other? Yeah, yeah. I'll chime in on this one. Sure. So you know, look, I. I the way that I think about IQ Wi-Fi 6 is, um, you know, I would I would package it up with Alarm.com cameras. So, you know, I, I really think about this as being heavily tied to camera installs. So, you know, if you're doing 100 installs a month, I'll make it up. And, you know, 50 of those installs include cameras, then, uh, you know, I would think about adding that to every one of your camera installs um, and then determining how many nodes you need um, based on the size of the home. That's certainly the way that we're thinking about it. That's where we see the most success and where it makes the most sense. Um, and then, you know, we have, I'm looking at some of the, I've been uh, responding to some of the chats here. I've had a lot of people chatting in, hey, can I run this as a parallel network? Can I run this in, in conjunction with the customer's Wi-Fi? I think we're going to get to that, but the answer is, yeah, you absolutely can. So look, if, if you want this to be kind of like Smart Gateway, where you install this in parallel with their network and you want to package it up as part of your cameras, you can absolutely do that. It's designed to run in parallel without IP address conflicts. Uh, we do that through our IP scheme that we have by default out of the box. It's plug and play that works really well that way. Or, you know, it's also really designed to, to be the customer's Wi-Fi. So, so many customers have really crappy Wi-Fi from their ISP, you know, from Comcast. They took the free router. It's buried in a closet or a basement somewhere kind of Are you off describing my house, Kevin? <laughs> What's <Yeah>. going on? <laughs> So, you know, we're certainly hoping that be able to walk in and say, hey, not only is this Wi-Fi going to make the cameras do what I say they're going to do, not only is it going to make the cameras work, um, but I can also offer you really great Wi-Fi for your Netflix and your streaming and for your kids' tablets on other areas of the house. Um, and that should allow you to really be able to, to sell them a really great Wi-Fi package while giving yourself a really great security partition for your cameras and doorbells to deliver on the, on the promises that you're making there. So, awesome, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Kev. Um, I, I, yeah, you're uh, you spoke to that way better than I could, <laughs> um, for sure. So, are there any other questions? What you want to? Um, there are a lot of questions. Do you want to open? Do you want to open it up right now, or do you want to wait till we go through all the integration? Because I think a lot of questions might be answered as we go on through some of the integration offerings. I know as a consumer, I'm super interested in that and having one app for everything, my security, my Wi-Fi, and be able to check statuses remotely and be able to manipulate it remotely is really interesting for me. And I'm not a technical person, but um, so why don't we keep going? And will any questions that are left unanswered at the end? and give Mark and Neil an opportunity to answer them, and then we can go from there. Perfect, perfect. 
Well, yeah, we've still got a couple of slides left to share. Um, re really, the last uh, section of today's webinar is focused in on the alarm.com piece because it was, um, you know, such a resounding uh, voice as we uh, launched our, our Gen 1 product. We actually launched that product without any of the back end support. And um, through voice of the customer, through you, we heard loud and clear that we needed to support our router through the back end. And, and we've been able to do that with, with our partners at alum.com. So with the ability to, to support our customers, your customers really, uh, from the back end, you really get the complete package. Um, so, um, you know, you can do this uh, remote from uh, essentially anywhere in the world. So um, we're, uh, we're super happy to, to be able to partner with, uh, with, with with uh, alarm.com here at JCI um, to help reduce those truck rolls. So um, I figured we'd uh, speak here to uh, how to make that happen, right? Um, so the alarm.com integration is, is super simple. Um, today, it's very simple. Uh, it, it's, it's very similar to, to adding, uh, say like a camera through, through mobile tech. So you're gonna um, search for your customer, um, once you find your customer, you'll select equipment, you'll add devices, uh, pick your IQ, um, or excuse me, your Wi-Fi router option there on the list. Uh, go go and uh, select Qualsys IQ uh, or Wi-Fi 6, and then locate the MAC address. And that's how Alarm.com knows, you know, that this thing exists and uh, uh, and those MAC addresses are unique to to, to everybody. Um, to each one of these devices. So I've got um, you know, a little video here, I'll just kind of get going. It just um, kind of shows you right from mobile tech what that looks like. Um, you know, I'm gonna go down, select equipment, add devices, Wi-Fi router, uh, Qualsys uh, Wi-Fi 6. Here's that MAC address. Um, you can enter that in manually or you can actually select your camera using your camera uh, phone. Or, or the camera built into your phone, scan that in. Um, here we're naming the device, uh, main network. I'm gonna hit continue. And then it takes a minute or two here uh, for uh, the back end to, to connect to that device. Um, and once it's initialized, um, I'll immediately see uh, the, the button there to view devices and, and my options, You know, uh, some of the, the controllability that I have built right into that um, mobile tech app. Is there anything here, Jim, that I'm missing that you want to um, add or chime in as, as far as the integration goes with the back end? Well, the, the one thing I'll, I'll add is that, uh, you know, the, the benefits here are that we can, you know, Alarm.com can move very quickly to continue to optimize uh, this installation flow uh, for you. And that's what we've been doing, you know, ever since we kicked off the beta earlier this year. Uh, previously, there was a, a requirement to power cycle the device to, you know, establish communication with alarm.com. We've since removed that now, so uh, it really is as quick as that video is, like in terms of setting setting up the device on the account. Uh, that process is only required for the controller. So if you have any other agents connected to it, you know, up to seven additional nodes, uh, those will be auto enrolled to that customer's account. So that's not scanning, you know, eight different MAC addresses into, into the account. You just scan the controller, and then, you know, if the system has two, four, seven uh, agents on it, you know, those will auto automatically be added to the account and, you know, as, as quick as possible for you. Uh, that way you can really, you know, reduce your, your time on site. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and I'll just highlight once again, um, this is all done through through mobile tech. So um, once it's added through mobile tech, you'll have the ability to, um, or the capability to actually see, uh, you know, the, the, the router um, information and, and some of these additional commands here in both um, mobile tech and the partner portal. So there's a lot of parity uh, going on between, you know, the partner portal and, and the app. Um, is, is just what I want to point out. So um, we can see um, each of the nodes, we can see all the connected devices, and then use this as a, a good troubleshooting guide to help, uh, to, to help validate um, 
the best connectivity uh, between agents, right? So um, I think alarm.com has done a pretty good job here. You know, I mentioned on our panel, we've got, um, you know, different colors that, that indicate various things. Um, I know alarm.com uh, does a lot of the same thing. Um, you know, so if, if something is, is red, it's something that probably needs a, a bit of attention. Um, so, so again, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, parity here between both uh, mobile tech and the partner portal. Great, yeah, I'll just chime in real quick. Um, with, with regards to like the, the sort of things that we can call out on that partner portal page, um, one of the biggest things, and Nate did touch on it earlier, was like how important the location of all those nodes is throughout the home. Because if, if you put one on one end of the house and the other on the far, you know, far end, you know, there's a lot of distance that, you know, that that traffic is going to have to travel. And obviously signal strength is reduced uh, when you introduce, you know, a farther distance, when you introduce more walls and everything. Uh, so one of the, the big things that we, we focus on is the uh, signal strength, the connection type of those agents. So if you have agents that are connected to other agents or the controller on the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, that means it's not close enough. It doesn't have a high enough signal strength uh, to connect using five gigahertz. And, and really the goal is, you know, in order of precedence, if you have the ability to hardwire your agents back to the controller, you know, you're gonna have the best network performance. Uh, if you do not have the ability to hardwire those agents to expand the Wi-Fi coverage, then the next best option is being, uh, is utilizing the five gigahertz uh, band for backhaul. And so, you know, that's what these devices are automatically programmed to do is connect over five gigahertz. However, if those devices are just out of range of a five gigahertz connection, uh, where it can't leverage the high speeds and the high throughput of the five gigahertz band, it will, you know, fall back to that 2.4 gigahertz connection. Um, so that's the biggest thing that we're trying to call out here. So you can see uh, on the screenshot, one of uh, the, the agents is highlighted in red on the signal strength. So we'll definitely be calling that out to, to you while you're on site to say like, hey, if, if you are connected over 2.4 gigahertz on one of your agents, you should absolutely look into rearranging the nodes within the home, maybe adding another node in between to, to bridge the gap better, uh, just to ensure that, you know, in the future, you don't have any additional truck rolls due to, you know, poor coverage in that customer's home, poor reliability, that sort of thing. Yeah, thanks for adding that, Jim. Mm -hmm. So once uh, added from mobile tech, the customer portal and the app, the customer app will uh, show the router commands and give your customers control to pause or start their internet connectivity as well. So there's no um, additional steps here that you need to do to, to get this functionality. So this is uh, you know, a couple different views. We've got um, you know, the, uh, the, the end user, the customer uh, portal here pulled up. Here I can see a list of devices. Um, I've got the option to go in and, and, and create profiles somewhat similar to what I might experience on the panel. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job to, to um, keep our, uh, oh my goodness, I apologize, to keep our, uh, our UIs consistent across the board. Um, and uh, yeah, so you'll 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 feel that parity again between uh, both the panel UI, um, the customer app, or even the customer portal. Um, and you know, in the customer app, you've got a few different cards. We'll call them. Uh, these are the Wi-Fi cards. So you can go in and do things like share Wi-Fi, um, see uh, very high level, you know, the number of connected devices, um, both on the main network or your guest network. And then you've got your uh, Wi-Fi uh, card there that shows, um, you, you can also see the profiles here uh, uh, pretty quickly. Um, and did, do you, do you want to talk to this slide, uh, Jim, or, or, or do you mind talking to this sure. slide? This Absolutely. Yeah, so, so this slide covers uh, 
essentially on that previous slide, the dashboard card, uh, the first icon you saw on that dashboard card was a share Wi-Fi. And you know that was that was one feature that we really wanted to bring to the forefront of uh, you know the Wi-Fi feature on the customer app. Um, I know I get frustrated when you're you know searching around uh, whether you go to someone else's house and you're getting onto their Wi-Fi or somebody comes to your house and you want to get them on the Wi-Fi. You want to be able to do that very easily and quickly. And if you if you're having guests, you know it's it's really important to to leverage that guest network to keep all of your devices on your network, you know, safe. Uh, that's one of the benefits of the IQ Wi-Fi 6. The guest Wi-Fi network is enabled by default. And so we wanted you to be able to leverage that, customers to be able to leverage that very quickly. So by clicking that share Wi-Fi right on that, you know, Wi-Fi dashboard card, it brings you to that screen on the left, which very quickly allows you to pick like, hey, is this a guest that you're trying to connect to your Wi-Fi? Or you know, is it you that you're trying to connect one of your own devices? So once you select one of those options, either the guest or the primary Wi-Fi, uh, it will bring up the screen on the right, which if you're trying to get a mobile device onto the Wi-Fi, you can very quickly just scan that QR code and allow it to connect right away. Um, if, you know, if you need the actual credentials, the password, you have the option uh, to click the show password option uh, there on the screen. And then also, if you just want to share it, you can actually, you know, click on iOS and Android, click the share button, and it leverages, you know, the full capabilities of iOS or Android to send a, you know, a message over email, over text, over any other, you know, communication uh, method uh, to, to share those credentials with someone uh, in case you're not on site. You know, it makes it very seamless to, to get somebody onto your network. I, I, I'm just blown away, you know, at, at some of the capabilities we've been able to come to market um, so quickly. And uh, just like anything, um, I think it's just going to get better as time permits. So, um, yeah, thanks for 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 sharing, uh, Jim. So, um, you know, I, I I shared a version of this slide earlier. Um, uh, really, this is the the, the customer's view of um, you know the customer portal. Uh, we've got very uh, similar information. You know, again, you're going to see some some device parity here uh, between the app or the customer portal. Um, quickly see what's online. Um, you know, see what what device it is. We can actually go in and at, uh, define those devices by category and um, update those uh, connected devices with um, you know some 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 detailed information so we know exactly. Uh, what's what's coming and what's going we can um, eventually do some some neat things with um, notifications as well as is, is, is kind of what we've uh, been talking about and then yeah. I, I was gonna just chime in real quick on on that slide you know the huge benefit to to JCI and alarm.com partnering uh, together on this is that you know the alarm.com backend has knowledge of a lot of the devices that are going to be on the Wi-Fi network, like you think of all the video cameras, security panels, uh, garage door openers, those sorts of things. What we're, what we've already started to do, and we're going to continue to uh, leverage and try to expand over time, is to in, enhance and in, improve those synergies, you know, in the smart home and security uh, ecosystem that we offer. So the more device identification that, that Alarm.com can do for the dealer. And for the customer, you know, the better off everyone's experience is going to be. So, you know, once the alarm.com backend receives that list of connected devices, uh, the alarm.com app, the partner portal, everything can really, uh, you can very quickly identify devices and name them for you and set those device types for you. So if, if you weren't, you know, if you were to pick up a router, off the shelf and you were to plug it in, connect all your devices, you could look at that list of connected devices and you would see some devices that you'd be able to understand what it is, if it was your printer or your, your smartphone, but a lot of them are, are not gonna give you a lot of details as to what that device is. So alarm.com in, in this space is able to identify all of your alarm.com devices, 
automatically name them to what the customer has already like named those devices as and set the device type and start like put, placing them into those different categories. So instead of just having a laundry list of you know various devices, you know, alarm.com is able to identify and start sorting and organizing your devices, renaming them so that you know both the dealer and the customer have a better idea of you know what devices are on the network. Yeah, awesome. And um, this is uh, essentially the last um, slide here that we had on the alarm.com uh, customer portal and the, and the customer facing app. Um, these are uh, profile details, right? So we can go in and, and quickly edit these and um, define what devices, once we've got that device list all uh, kind of nailed down of, of what um, you know, devices we want to participate in to a specific profile. So maybe we've got, um, you know, profiles defined by actual individuals. You know, this is a, a, a good example of, you know, devices that are owned by Bo. Uh, Bo uh, is one of our marketing um, folks here on the call today. But um, by doing that, we can, uh, you know, get a, a, a little more, you um, uh, details of, of what's connected and what's not connected and and uh, be able to do things like pause or, or, or play internet connectivity. So with that was was there anything else um, Jim that you'd you'd like to add to uh, the conversation here regarding profiles and, and what what is and isn't available through through the back end with alarm.com? Yeah, I, I think I would maybe just uh, reemphasize that there's a, a lot more that can be done in this space. And, you know, JCI and Alarm.com are, are working tirelessly uh, to continue to build build out more capabilities, more troubleshooting tools, um, more customer facing features as well. So uh, I would say the big takeaway from us, the biggest piece of feedback we have is that, you know, please please give us your feedback on, on this product. Let us know what you think is the most important part. Uh, if there's anything you feel like we're missing, let us know. We might already be working on it, or maybe that's the first time we've heard that from a dealer. So we're, we're really open to feedback on these products, on this integration. We'd love to bring more value to you, to your customers. So, you know, please continue to continue providing that feedback to us. You know, we'd be more than happy to hear it. And uh, we we're happy to continue to you know innovate and provide uh, you know as best of a customer and dealer experience as possible. Perfect. Well, thanks so much, Jim, for taking the time out of your schedule to to help out with today's webinar. Um, the partnership it, it it means a lot. It's um, I think it's it's been working rather well. And um, as Jim mentioned, we're going to continue to. Um, Bring more features and benefits, you know, as, as time permits. So with that, that just kind of leads us to our, our Q&A section of today's presentation. Whitney, is there um, any outstanding questions that, that we might want to address? I mean, on? we've got some serious keyboard warriors. There's only a few questions that haven't been answered yet. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you guys. I want to say thank you so much for being involved in the webinar today. There are a lot of questions. The participation is very appreciated. And I want to uh, reiterate what Jim and Nate have said with customer feedback is so important to what we try to do on this side of the business and how we evolve and create our roadmaps for all of our products. Your feedback has directly impacted that and influenced it. I think Kevin can speak to that completely. But um, we do have some people who want to know how do they get involved in providing feedback on Wi-Fi 6 in this case and how do they start providing that feedback and influencing and seeing the situations they have? Yeah, great question. There's, there's a lot of different um, ways, I guess, that you can uh, keep your finger on the pulse. Um, I'd recommend reaching out to your local TAM and um, the TAM team is uh, highly uh, vested into this product with many other products. Um, you may know your, your, your TAM personally. Um, you may have a good relationship with him. Uh, if, you, if you don't, I would recommend reaching out to your sales team and, and get to know your TAM. Um, your TAM is, a, or TAM is an acronym that means a technical account manager. So these guys are all technical. 
Um, they know a little bit about everything. And if they can't figure it out, there's likely somebody on the team that specializes in whatever, you know, that, that product is. So yeah, reach out to the TAMs and, you know, they really are a big contributor to that feedback loop. So, you know, we have something. Yeah. Here. This is, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just second that Nate, definitely. And, and I would also add, you know, join these webinars. Look, we, we are, all of your questions are recorded. We're answering fast and furious. I know we haven't gotten to all of them, but some of you guys have had very insightful questions and we take these back to the team. We circulate these uh, through our, our PM and TAM and engineering product teams. So um, definitely continue to engage with us uh, on the webinars here. We also have the closed group Facebook pages. I know a lot of you guys know about those. Join our, join our closed group Facebook pages um, where you can communicate directly with us. We're kind of continually monitoring those and then like Nate said, the, the TAMs really are the tip of the spear on the feedback loop and really help get your feedback back to product and engineering. So, Perfect. Thanks. Okay, so we do have a few questions. This one's come up a couple different times. Jim, this one might be for you. Some of the folks here, most recently, Freddie, says that they can't see some of the pages on mobile tech from the user interface. They can't see the password option and things like that. What do they need to do to kind of reboot that? Or are we working on that? Uh, there, there is a, uh, if, if he's referring to the security network, uh, there's a permission actually required. Your dealer administrator uh, needs to give you that correct permission to view access point credentials uh, for, for your Wi-Fi devices. So that's, you know, the IP Wi-Fi 6, that's the same for the smart gateway and for the smart chime. So if, if you if you don't have the ability to see that password on Partner Portal or Mobile Tech, definitely reach out to your dealer administrator uh, to get you squared away with that that permission. Perfect. Um, Tim asked, what alarm.com packages are needed for setting up the Wi-Fi account? Uh, none, actually. Uh, there is That's no fair. restriction on installing IQ Wi-Fi 6s. There is no service package add-on. There is no fee. Everything is completely unrestricted. Uh, you will be able to add uh, an IQ Wi-Fi 6 to any and every account. Awesome, that's great news. Um, Scott asked, what are the specific benefits of IQ Wi-Fi 6 versus like Eero's Pro 6E system? Do you know off the top of your head, Nate? Yeah, um, another great question. Um, so Euro Pro is, uh, you know, a slightly different technology. It supports what we call tri-band, and uh, Wi-Fi 6 actually supports uh, dual band. So the Pro is actually going to give you a third band, and they utilize that to, to mesh, um, you know, between their, we call them agents. Um, so it's like comparing apples to oranges um, as far as the technology goes. And then, of course, you know, with, with Wi-Fi 6, you do have, uh, or IQ Wi-Fi 6, you do have all the features and bins that we've just shared with, uh, with you today. You know, the alarm.com backend, I think, is a huge, um, you know, feature set. Perfect. So. Okay. I think that's pretty much all the questions right now, but we can continue to follow up. So I think we do have a few things to wrap up with, right, Nate? Yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, the good stuff. I, yeah, I think we're in a good spot I here. Want, I, wanted add, I wanted to add one thing real quick, Nate, on that on that comment about Eero Pro 6E. I think was the question and the difference between Wi-Fi 6. You were correct in your in your tri band. I'd also add there's a, a pretty significant price difference too, right? So yeah. the the the, the three-pack of the Eero Pro 6E is $700, um, and uh, we're much more competitively priced. So you really are kind of comparing apples to oranges there. Yeah, and I'll I'll just add, you know, we've kind of uh, mentioned it throughout the to today's webinar. Um, we are heavily vested into this uh, part of our business, and you know, there, there's definitely more to come. So we're already looking at, you know, um, additional technologies like 6E. Um, or, or that uh, Wi-Fi 6E plus um, technology to offer things like tri-band, but yeah. Perfect, so we do have um, some Black Friday ads running on Wi-Fi. So talk to your local distributor about that and for Cyber Week. And then Bo has some more polls and we can wrap it up. 
Yes, yeah, real quick with the Black Friday promos, we extended those through November. So today's kind of the last day. If you guys want to take advantage of that, reach out to your distributor. Um, there's some pretty heavy discounts there. Um, so with that being said, we're going to launch two last polls and then we'll talk about kind of the winners here. So stick with us um, really quick. So first poll here, uh, would you like someone to contact you about IQ Wi-Fi 6? Um, and then you can choose all that apply. You can, if you want sales to reach out to you, if you want a technical account manager to reach out to you, click those, you can, you know, click any of those options. Just give you guys a couple more seconds here. All right, a couple more seconds, couple more seconds. All right, perfect. And then this is our last poll and then I'll talk to you about the prizes. Um, so are you interested in receiving a free IQ Wi-Fi 6 in exchange for a testimonial we can use in marketing? So if, you're, if that's something you're interested in, um, you know, us getting you a unit and then doing some, you know, a testimonial or a case study type thing, um, let us know. All right, couple more seconds for you guys. Okay, perfect. We will close that last poll. Um, and then, so talking talking about the winners. So we wanted to announce every the, the winners live, but it was going to be kind of too difficult to you know go through our list of the first people to register and then all the people that were here. So we will be after this, we'll be pulling a report, and then you'll be receiving an email from myself or Will Hackett uh, saying that you're the winner. We're going to reach out, get your information. Um, and then we will we'll get you your, your two units. So watch for an email from, from bo.freeman at JCI today um, and to see if you're the winner. And then if, if you did win, we will, um, you know, we'll be getting you those units. And then one last thing I put in the chat, we are doing a, another webinar for uh, IQ4 Hub, uh, kind of comparing the differences between IQ Panel 4 and IQ4 Hub. We're doing that on the 14th of December. Uh, the link is in uh, the chat, so go in and, and get registered. We will be doing another a large giveaway on that uh, of some IQ4 Hub units, so you're not going to want to miss that one, and it's, it's some really important stuff. So that's all I had uh, for my end. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah, and Bo, can you just reiterate? Thank you again for joining. Special shout out to Jim, Nate, and Kevin for helping host this with your expertise and sharing that. This is our biggest giveaway I think we've ever done on a webinar. So I'm really excited that we were able to make it happen and able to make it happen again for December. So hope to see you there. Thanks again, you guys. Appreciate all of your time and we'll see you soon. See ya. Bye, guys. Thanks.